Welcome to 5.2. So now what we're going to do is figure out the probability of something occurring based on a score. Okay, so here's what we're going to apply is being able to determine what the probability is that a person will drive 12,000 miles per year for the duration of their lease. Figuring out the probability of the number of years that a person will keep their new car for five years and the probability that a person with new, a new data plan will text between 200 and 400 messages a month. Now you can think about when you're pricing things or even purchasing things. These are things that you might want to know when you're setting price points. So now we'll be able to figure them out. Okay, so let's start reading through this and pulling the numbers out. Finding um, probabilities for distributions that are normal. A survey indicates that people keep their cell phone on an average of 1.5 years before buying a new one. Here's a number, let's define it. They're talking about an average for a population, we're talking about mu is 1.5. The standard deviation, oh, standard deviation is 0.25. So on average they keep their phone 1.5 years, but three months or a quarter of a year um, is the standard deviation. So you can figure out what would be considered usual or unusual for them to keep their phone. A cell phone user is selected at random. Find the probability that the user will keep his or her phone for less than one year before buying a new one. Assume that the lengths of time people are given for their phone are normally distributed and are represented by the variable x. Okay, so we want to know when x equals 1 because we want to know when the length of time somebody keeps their phone is one year. Now if we just think about it, that's going to be below the average. The average or 50% of the people keep their, year, their phone for a year and a half and we're below the average. So our z-score should be less than zero. All right, so here we go to the solution. And I'm telling you that there's an error in it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cross it out when we get there. The figure shows that a normal curve with an average of 1.5 and a standard deviation um, is 0.25. So that's what this figure is showing here. Here's the mean, 1.5. The shaded area for x is less than one year. And um, so they wanna know when, if this is 1.5, what it would be for one year, which is to the left of the mean, so it's going to have a z-score of less than one. So they're going to figure out what the z-score is for that value. x, which is the one, minus mu, here's the mistake, it should be 1.5, there's a typo, divided by the standard deviation gives me a z-score of negative two, which we did expect a negative z-score because it's to the left of the mean. So now what we have to do is go to our table and figure out what percentage represents negative two for a z-score. If you're doing this in your graphing calculator, you can enter normal CDF, the left bound's negative 3.49, then you're gonna put your z-score of negative two, zero for your mean and one for the standard deviation. And if you do that, sorry for it being crunched, you're gonna get approximately 0 0.022 Five. However, if you look in the table, you're going to get 0 0.0228. So that would mean 2.28, or if you use the graphing calculator, 2.25% of cell phone users will keep their phone for less than one year before finding a new one. And because this is less than 5%, we would consider this very unusual. So somebody keeping their cell phone um, for a year or less would be considered unusual. Or, oops. All right, let's try it again. The average speed of vehicles traveling on a stretch of highway is 67 miles per hour. All right, average means that the mu is going to be 67. With a standard deviation, so our standard deviation is 3.5 miles. A vehicle is selected at random. What is the probability that, the violating, that, they, that it is violating a speed limit of 70 miles per hour? Okay. So if we draw this out, we know that 67 is here because it's the mean. They want to know when the person is doing 70 and they're violating the speed limit, so it would be 70 or more. Okay, So we need to figure out the z-score for this value right here and then subtract it from 1. We'll get to that in a second. So we did A, A. B, we want our z-score. So the z-score is going to equal my x, 
70 minus my mu, or my mean, 67, divided by the standard deviation of 3.5. So you guys should be doing this as well. 70 minus 67 equals, divided by 3.5 equals. And I get a z-score of approximately 0.8571. 0.85, we'll do 857. All right, so we can look this value up in the table, or you can use your graphing calculator. To find the graphing calculator version, it's going to be normal CDF, and our left bound is negative 3.49, our z-score is 0.857, the mean for z-scores is 0, and the standard deviation is 1. So you're going to plug that in. I'm doing the same thing. I'm talking so that you can do it at the same time as me, negative 3.49, comma, point. 857 comma 0 comma 1 enter. All right. And I get that that equals 0 0.804. We'll stop there at the hundredths. Now, what that means is when you're getting the cumulative distribution, you're getting the part that I just sketched in black, everything to the left of 70. But remember, they want to know who's going greater than that. Since underneath the curve represents 100%, I can just take 1 and subtract from it everything to the left of the z-score I got for 70 miles per hour. And if we do that, then we're going to say that we have a percent of... I, I glitched out here, so if I jumped around, I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening right now, but this is going to equal 0.196. Okay, so this area represents 0.196. Six. So my interpretation of that is going to be that 0.2 or 20% of the population violates a speed limit of 70 miles per hour. Okay. So based on the population mean, the standard deviation, we were able to do some analysis on what percent of the population speeds 70 miles per hour or greater. And we concluded that 20% of the population speeds at 20, 70 miles per hour or greater. All right, so this one's going to take a little thinking. So what I want you guys to do for me is set these up and give them a try so that when we come into class and we have our warm-up, we'll be ready to um, fly out of the gate with these problems. So that's all for now. Thanks, guys.